I work with a lot of amplifiers and sometimes I need to do a characterization beyond just measuring its gain, such as for example the noise figure. But I don't own a noise figure meter so I need to improvise using a spectrum analyzer and I'm going to show you today how I do that. The real device in this diagram is probably an amplifier, it could be a receiver. And noise figure tells you the change in the noise as the signal goes from the input to the output. So going into a device you have a signal S sub i and a certain amount of noise that's already with it N sub i. The device does work on the signal, gives it a gain of G and adds some extra noise and out comes the original signal boosted by the gain, the original noise boosted by the gain and more noise. And we'll just call N sub O the noise coming out and S sub O the signal coming out. The noise factor measures how much the signal to noise ratio changes going from the input to the output of the device. It's simply the ratio of those SNRs. The best way to see signal to noise ratio is simply to look at it on a spectrum analyzer. So if I have signals, that's these things off to the left, and I have a noise floor, the region on the right, the signal to noise ratio is simply the difference between them. And it's a difference, it's not a ratio. Now how does that work? Well the vertical axis on the spectrum analyzer is in logarithms, it's decibels. And so a difference is actually a ratio. The noise power coming into the amplifier, or the ambient noise, is given by KTB. K is Boltzmann's constant, T is the temperature, B is the measurement bandwidth, which I always keep at 1 hertz. This noise power gets boosted by the gain and we can go ahead and use this expression KTB in the definition of noise factor. The signal noise ratio at the input over the signal noise at the output. And replace N sub I, the noise at the input, with KTB and replace S sub O, the output signal, with the gain times the input signal. Cancel everything that's common and you have this expression that the noise factor is the output noise divided by gain times KTB. Let's take this expression and do some things to it. First, let's take the logarithm of both sides. And then let's multiply both sides by 10. The left-hand side is the noise factor in decibels. Whenever you take 10 times log base 10 of a quantity, you have that quantity in decibels. And it's called the noise figure. Let's unpack the right-hand side a little bit. It's a ratio inside a logarithm. So I'll bring GKTB into a minus logarithm. Let's break it apart one more step and get B all by itself. At room temperature, KT equals conveniently 4.00 times 10 to the minus 18. And in my measurements, I'll always set the measurement bandwidth, the resolution bandwidth of the spectrum analyzer, to 1 hertz. That will make this last term go away. If you don't have access to a 1 hertz resolution bandwidth on your spectrum analyzer, then use whatever it is for B. N sub O will be adjusted accordingly. If B is 10 hertz, N sub O will be 10 decibels larger. 10 log base 10 of 4 times 10 minus 18 is minus 174 dBm. dBm is decibels relative to 1 milliwatt, which is why I used millijoules in Boltzmann's constant. Minus 174 dBm is the noise power contained in 1 hertz of spectrum at room temperature. That's a good number for anybody working in RF and microwaves to remember. The noise figure is the output noise in decibels. That's 10 log base 10 of the output noise minus the gain in decibels plus 174 dBm. And in the event that you can't set B to 1 hertz in your spectrum analyzer, you need to include this last term. I'll demonstrate using this equation with a model ZHL6A amplifier from mini circuits. I'll test it at 40 megahertz. The gain of this amplifier is specified at that frequency to be 25.6 decibels and the noise figure is promised to be less than 9.5 decibels. I'll do the measurement with a Keysight CXA signal analyzer, spectrum analyzer. I realize that there are features in the CXA signal analyzer that I could be using this demo and I'm not because I want to keep this demonstration generic for users of other equipment. And what I will describe is the gain method of noise figure measurement. The input to the device is terminated in 50 ohms to simulate a transmission line going out forever but no signal coming in. And all we need to do is consider what happens when the ambient thermal noise, the KTB, is boosted by a gain of G. Here in the microwave lab, we will do a measurement of the noise and gain of an amplifier using a Keysight spectrum analyzer, which will be used to detect the noise power coming out of the amplifier. 
and the amplifier itself is a mini circuits ZHL 6A S plus amplifier. And I'm going to bias it today at 24 volts. The input is left open, but it should be terminated in 50 ohms. And I don't have a 50 ohm terminator available today, so instead I strung together these attenuators, adding up to about 26 decibels of attenuation, and that's a perfectly fine 50 ohm load. The output of the amplifier then goes to the spectrum analyzer, where I'll measure the noise figure. First I need to check the gain of the amplifier. I do that with a signal generator, so I hook up a known minus 50 dBm signal through this cable at 40 megahertz and I look at the output on a spectrum analyzer to see what the gain is. And I put a marker at the peak and I get minus 22.5 dBm. With minus 50 going in, that's a gain of 27.5 decibels. You can't see it, but right now I am attaching a 50 ohm dummy load to the input of the amplifier. That is the closest we come to a calibrated noise source in the gain measurement, a 50 ohm termination at the temperature of the room. I'm going to turn the voltage back up. To measure the noise in the signal, the settings on the spectrum analyzer need to be changed. Beginning with the center frequency, it's at 40 megahertz. We'll set the span to 10 kilohertz. It could be smaller. The amplitude section includes an attenuator, which needs to be changed from 10 to 0 dB. The bandwidth section has resolution bandwidth and a video bandwidth. I'm going to set them both to 1 hertz, although we'll also talk a little bit about why you might choose different settings. The trace that you're seeing on the screen is the noise level coming out of the amplifier, which is terminated in 50 ohms. I can put a marker on it, turn on markers. Horizontal blue line helps you to sort of see where it is. But it's somewhere around minus 136 to 139 decibels. It's quite a spread, but there's another thing that can be done with a spectrum analyzer, and that's an averaging procedure. Go to trace average, and there are two types of detectors in the spectrum analyzer. There's the normal detector and there's the RMS detector. We need to use the RMS detector. Oftentimes you're set to normal, so make sure you're not. When you go to averaging, if you are on normal detector, you will average the logarithm of the power, the decibels, rather than the power itself. So RMS averaging is the averaging type you want to use. Now back to trace detector and turn on trace average and wait for the averaging to take place. You can see it's slowly improving. While we're at it, I'm going to make some changes. Go into the amplitude section. I'm going to change scales per division. I'm going to change it all the way down to 1 dB, and I need to adjust reference level to get it back into view. I'm going to reduce it further to 0.2 decibels per division. And you can see it almost fills the whole screen, but let's just wait now. It's at 11 averages so far and counting. So we've done about 75 averages. Let's do some analysis on this. Marker's turned on, so let's move it around and see we have minus 137.5 plus or minus a couple tenths. I'm going to call the noise floor at minus 137.5 plus or minus 0.2 dBm. There are a couple of other ways of getting this. You can average it to be even flatter by changing the resolution bandwidth to be at least 10 times higher than the video bandwidth. Let's make it 10 hertz and the level will go up by 10 decibels and after it's averaged a little bit it will be even less noisy than the trace we just saw but it'll be 10 decibels higher and you need to subtract that 10 decibels from the noise level remembering that we're on 0 0.2 decibels per division already after 35 averages we're better than we were with the resolution bandwidth at only one hertz so it does help to set the resolution bandwidth higher. I still have minus 127.5 subtracting 10 from it to account for the 10 hertz resolution bandwidth. That's B in the equation. So there's really no difference, but it's a little cleaner and easier to see. And then the third thing you can do is on this spectrum analyzer model, you turn on noise marker. You see the display is even better averaged, and it's reading minus 137.7, I would call it. So if I use the noise marker on the spectrum analyzer, I'll get minus 137.7 decibels. But I want to go with the value that I got at the 1 hertz resolution bandwidth without a noise marker because you might not have one on your spectrum analyzer.
So we're going with minus 137.5 plus or minus 0.2 dBm for the noise. To summarize, I measured the noise level three different ways with different settings on resolution bandwidth and averaging schemes. A fourth way would be to set the resolution bandwidth even wider, in which case averaging won't even be necessary. And you should find that you get about the same noise level measurement. Using the expression that we have for the noise figure, in terms of the output noise which we just measured, and the gain which we just measured, and the bandwidth, B, which is set to 1, we can quickly calculate the noise figure. The noise that we measured coming out of the device was minus 137.5 with an uncertainty. The gain was 27.5 dB, and we have our 174. You don't need to include the cable loss in this output noise. Just look at the freeze equation. It's after the gain stage, but you do need to account for it in the gain. And we get 9 decibels with an uncertainty of about 0.3 decibels propagated through. And you can compare that to the claim on the spec sheet that the noise figure is less than 9.5 decibels. So it passes its test. That's my summary of how I do a quick and dirty measurement of noise figure using a spectrum analyzer. If you want to do a measurement on a low noise amplifier where the noise figure may only be 1 decibel, you can follow this procedure, but you have to be meticulous in accounting for every tenth and hundredth of a decibel along the way. My concluding remark is that this is not really a very good way to measure noise figure. The best way to do it is with the Y-factor method. It's more expensive and perhaps a little more complicated because it uses a calibrated noise source, which you need to purchase for three or four thousand dollars. But because of the calibrated noise source, it's a more accurate measurement method. The basic idea is to measure the noise coming out of the device under the test with the noise source set at two levels, on and off, biased and unbiased, and then graph the output noise temperature versus the noise source temperature and extrapolate out the amplifier temperature. Packaging this graph up into equations is where the Y-factor method name comes from. The Y factor is the difference in the measured noise when the calibrated source is biased versus unbiased, which is essentially the excess noise ratio, the difference in the hot and cold temperatures of that calibrated noise source, divided by the ambient temperature, which is referenced to 290, and from that the noise figure can be calculated. That's the method that noise figure meters use, and that you may wish to use if you want to make an investment in a calibrated noise source.